Hello Survivor, my name is Bean and in this video I'll show you how to thrive in DayZ as a new player. First things first, you're going to need food and water. Upon spawning in, your food and water will already be in the yellow. There will be a single piece of fruit in your inventory waiting for you to sink your teeth into. As you're chomping on your juicy piece of fruit, be on the lookout for nearby buildings to loot for potential food, clothing and weapons. Side note, you'll quickly realise literally anything in Daisy can be used as a weapon to defend yourself. You'll need to figure out where you are in order to have a fighting chance of surviving. When you spawn in, you'll always be facing north. There is also a train track and a main road that run along the entire length of the coastline. If you have spawned on the east side of the map, the main road will be before the train track. If you have spawned on the south side of the map, the train track will be before the main road. From here, you can follow either one to a nearby town. If you follow the road, you'll see signs that tell you what town you're about to enter. And if you follow the train track, you will come up on train stations that have the town name across the front of the building. Yes, it's in Russian, but don't worry. You can use an app called Azavav to find your location. It will also show you where nearby wells are and animal spawn locations, along with a huge list of other things. There is also a tourist map you can carry in your inventory and these huge trail maps in most towns that tell you exactly where you are. Once you have found a well in your area, you'll want to drink until you get the full stomach icon next to your stats in the bottom right hand corner. If you have found a water bottle, it'll make hydrating your character a lot faster, but never ever drink the contents of a water bottle you have just found. It has a high chance of making you sick. With the bottle in hand, look at the floor and empty its contents, then fill it up with fresh water from a well. If you've found chlorine tablets, then you can fill up your bottle with dirty water from ponds or streams and combine it with chlorine tablets to make it drinkable. Now you'll want to source some food to get in those calories. You can loot buildings and kill zombies for potential food and other items that may spawn. However, fresh spawns are frequent and the chances of finding food in buildings become slim. But you may have heard a few chickens around town while you were looting. These are quick and easy snacks, but will require a knife and a fire before consumption. However, you can carry a chicken in your inventory while you search for a knife. You can also craft a knife by combining two small stones. Small stones can be found along train tracks and trail paths. Once you have skinned your chicken, make sure you wash your hands to avoid getting sick and pick up the bones because they might just save your life. Fishing is one of the best ways to get in early calories and it can be done at any water source around the map. Fishing rods and hooks can be found at the red and white rowboats along the shoreline. In order to fish, you'll need to dig up worms. Simply look at the ground with a bladed tool in your hands to get the prompt to dig up worms. Then combine the worm with your hook. If you haven't managed to find any fishing equipment, you can make an improvised fishing rod and bone hooks. This is why the chicken bones were important. To craft a fishing rod, you'll need a long stick and a rope. You can get long sticks from large bushes by using a sharp object or your hands to break down the bush. You can craft a rope from two stacks of six rags or by combining a knife with guts from your first victim or it can be found in sheds, garages and houses. 
combine the long stick with a rope to craft a fishing rod. To make your bone hook, combine the bones with a bladed tool. Then you can attach your worm to the bone hook, then onto your fishing rod to start fishing. You'll also need to gut and prepare your fish with a knife. Before you can eat your juicy chicken or freshly caught fish, you'll need to make a fire. By combining fuel in the form of sticks or firewood with kindling in the form of bark, paper, bandages or rags. You can cut bark from trees using a knife. You can light your fire using either a lighter, matches or a road flare. Alternatively, you can craft a hand drill kit by combining one short stick with one piece of bark. You can get short sticks from bushes or you can break down long sticks to get three short sticks. If you're cooking outside, you'll need to sharpen a long stick in order to bake your food. But you can cook at fireplaces inside houses. This method is less time consuming. While you're looting around town, you'll want to be changing into something a little warmer other than your freshy clothes. Each clothing item has an insulation level. Wearing high or best insulation clothing will not only keep you warmer, but you'll be less likely to catch a cold. Keep an eye out for points of interest, such as police stations for a potential gun, ammo, stab or press vest, fire stations for warmer clothing and melee weapons, hunting shops for a potential gun, ammo, warmer clothing and other survival equipment like maps and compasses, blue medical buildings and hospitals for bandages, saline bags, IV kits, morphine, epinephrine, tetracycline and multivitamins, along with other medical items. But these are the most important items you'll want to be looking for. Now you know where you are with full food and hydration, a gun, medical supplies and other random bits you have found around town and an outfit that makes you look like a snack, which is very important by the way, because you will die and the best way to die is to die looking like a snack. You are now ready to venture out of freshy territory deeper into Chinaris. Be prepared to get lost, but cherish these moments. You can follow streams and power lines as they always lead to towns. Use the color-coded trail paths that will take you deep into the wilderness and to areas of the map that are less traveled by other survivors. Like I mentioned earlier, there is an app called iSurvive that you can use to navigate as you learn the layout of the map, or just keep a tourist map and a compass in your inventory. Once you're a bit more experienced, you can use the sun to help you navigate as it rises in the east and sets in the west. It's important you try and remember where you saw certain landmarks upon spawning in, such as lighthouses, bridges and cranes, as you'll be seeing these a lot and learning how many cranes are at the docks in Svetlo or what's near the lighthouse on the west side of Cherno will help you pinpoint your location faster. If I missed anything or you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I hope this video helps you out. If it did and you want to start building your first home in Chinaris, then you should definitely watch this.